Yo, what is Crackalack and Ridge Runner Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Ridge Runners Live. Tonight we are joined by the two race directors for the newest 100 miler in the state of Pennsylvania. The inaugural Rabid Raccoon 100 is set to take place March 19th, and we're so excited to sit down with these two and hear all about the why and the inspiration for this race. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Brandon Wise and Moses Greenspan. How's it going? Going well. Right. Yep, we're happy to be here. We're super excited to learn all about this race. You know, as we were talking in the pre-show, uh, this kind of popped up on a couple of race calendars for me. And I was like, oh, this race looks epic. 16,000 feet of climbing in Pennsylvania. I'm all about it. So I want to know, you know, kind of what, what makes this race go? What was the inspiration for it? And we'll kind of dive into to all those things in a little bit. Before we get too deep into the show, uh, let's start off with our normal first question with what is everyone drinking tonight? And Brandon, if you want to kick things off. Yeah, I'm drinking um, some sap. Uh, it's seltzer, uh, maple seltzer water from Vermont. That's awesome. I personally never have tried that, but I might need to get a can uh, out here if I can, uh, if they ship. So. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. What about you, Moses? I'm drinking uh, Kohler Premium Lager from a brewery here in Grove City. Love it. John? Uh, I've got double beers tonight, but they're not alcoholic, so that's fine, right? Um, I've got the athletic com brewing company. I got the all out, you know, cause it's a uh, nice and chilly still outside. So I like that one. And then I also got a hazy IP from them as well. Um, they make some pretty good stuff and I, I enjoy it. Wesley, how about you? Are you rocking a seltzer over there too? You're going to even us back out. Can't do a seltzer tonight. Cause this show is a little too big for that, but it is a big sky brewing. Hold my beer and watch this. You know, I thought this was kind of a cool beer, uh, to, especially with these two gentlemen on in, you know, I think the East coast trail and ultra running scene is going to be on, uh, as on has everyone has their eyes on this race, um, and will for the future. So I think it's a, uh, it's a fitting choice for sure. Um, let's just start off by, getting to know a little bit about about you guys and kind of how you kind of found trail running uh, in your lives and kind of why you wanted to uh, maybe put on a race like this. So um, I'll be the first to say, I don't have a super in-depth background in trail running. I've only run a few races myself, but I guess where the journey of this event starts is I'm the co-owner of Wolf Creek Race Management. Um, uh, my partner also went to Grove City College um, where we ran cross country and track together. We have a background in cross country and track and a little bit of road racing. Um, and in 2016, we started Wolf Creek Race Management and we started hosting some of our own events. We also do services for other events. We do timing and race management, uh, track and cross country, everything. So, um, <clears throat> and since 2016, we've held like five Ks and we've started in 2020, we started putting on half marathons and, um, we've just, uh, last year we had our first real trail half marathon. We held it at new river gorge. Uh, National Park and Preserve, and um, <clears throat> we just wanted to start diversifying our portfolio of events more into trail running, since um, our little tastes of trail running we've had have been very enjoyable. We really like the people a lot. Um, so, I mean, we've had this idea now for a while to host a race at Raccoon Creek State Park. We've run We've run the 20 mile loop around the perimeter of the park a few times now. And the first time we ran it, we just thought this would be a, uh, this would be a great, great race to a uh, great place to do a long trail race at. So we just kind of started uh, putting some plans together for it. That's great. Um, so tell us more about this like kind of course over there. And like you said, it's like a 20 mile, um, loop around the perimeter basically is it so it's i'm assuming that's a five mile or a five loop course then or is it more out and backs and there's like little pieces that weren't i'm not aware of it, um for the 100 mile it's pretty much a five loop course um we have like a little out and back at the start just to make it 
like right on 100 miles because mm -hmm. the loops aren't perfectly 20 miles, but they're pretty close. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's for, basically, yeah, you can. Yeah, for the ahead. first loop, there's like a small out and back. But then after that, it's just five straight loops. Um, and then for the 100K, it's three loops. And obviously the 20 miles, one loop. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. Um, makes it easier for people counting and to set up aid stations and everything like that. Yeah, I was going to say, it definitely should sound like it would make it easier on you all for your aid station planning and even then for crew to get around to those different areas. Um, if you guys take it... so. What was the original like inspiration then, I guess, for besides just, was it just that loop running that loop and wanting to put on an event there or like why the hundred mile of, you know, it's kind of a new, new era to get, jump in at, for your company. So I'm kind of curious it, like, to that reason. Uh, it is, um, it's something that we thought would be cool to do and that, you know, we went for it. Um, there, there really aren't many hundred mile races around um you know comparatively to other races obviously there's a lot smaller market for them but um there's really only one other notable 100 mile race in western pennsylvania so we just thought you know the area could probably use another one always remember yeah, the hundreds the first time i ever ran that 20 mile loop was after Brandon and then the other owner of Wolf Creek, Andrew, uh, they had run it and they were saying, Oh, this, this course is so difficult. Moses, you're going to come here. You're not going to finish. You're going to get lost. It's going to be, you know, they're really hyping it up and we get there and Andrew just takes off and he always gets lost. So he's just gone. And I ran with Brandon for a while and I was thinking this like, isn't that bad it's kind of hilly but not terrible and then uh, after completing like, the first half of the loop i was like oh i think i can do this on my own finished off fine and um i realized like this is like one of the more runnable long loops that you can do in the area uh very like it's challenging but it also flows pretty well and uh, finishing then Andrew got completely lost, did not finish the 20 mile loop. I think he ended up like miles outside of the park, but, um, but Brandon and I, you know, finished and um, we kind of started thinking about, you know, how we could plan a race, um, plan a race in the park. So you touched on it a little bit, but I kind of want to dive deeper into like what the course is actually like, you know, in terms of like technicality or, you know, what are the climbs like? Are they super steep or are they able to kind of run up them and not really worry about it? Uh, you know, to put it in perspective, I was in Moab uh, last weekend and, you know, you know, the course says like, okay, you're running on slick rock for a couple miles of the race and you know that's one thing to know that you're running on slick rock but to experience it is a different thing so what you know advice can you give someone who's coming into this race who's like wants to know more about the course or hasn't been able to get out to the uh, area themselves and explore it yet yeah i'd say it's it's very uh there's no section of the course that individually is super challenging um there I'd say two climbs that will definitely take something out of you. Um, so one is like right after the first aid station, basically immediately after you go up this climb. Um, and then the other is basically the, uh, the opposite side of the loop also has a climb. But other than that, um, it's just, you know, single track trails and, um, they're, you know, it's rolling basically the whole time, no significant flat portions, but also no real tough up, uphills or downhills. Um, there are a couple minor Creek crossings, but nothing that like you're not forging rivers or anything like that. Um, like I wouldn't, you could definitely run the course without getting your shoes wet. Um, and then there are, 
two sections that have a little bit on road. So one's on like a forest road, like double track forest road for a little bit. And then another, you come out of the loop and you're by the dam, right? So the whole loop goes around um, this lake. And so you come out by the dam and then you're on a paved road for about a mile. Um, and so that happens each loop. But the majority of the course, single track trail rolling. Is it pretty buffed out course or is it, you know, is there gonna be rocks and roots kind of stuff? And, you know, I don't think there'll be much leaf coverage in the spring, but. Right. So there are some roots. Right, go ahead, Brandon. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it's actually a, f a fair amount of roots. Not not so rocky, though. Maybe a few sections or there's a little bit. I'd say it's pretty typical East Coast woodland running most most all most all the single track is going to be under uh you know in the woods now yeah in march it's not going to be it's going to be look a little bit more open yeah um yeah. than in october like when we ran it last time yeah that's exciting it sounds like you're going to have a hopefully a couple fast times um at this course given the <laughs> you know kind of rolling aspect and ability to kind of and run there's it. some names signed up for this race too so it's awesome. It's gonna be a good year one. Yeah, and we're you know, there's a lot of ultra courses that um, the race is almost it's set up to be even more challenging than running 100 miles. Uh, so as if you know 100 miles isn't hard enough, there's added complications. This is definitely not one of those courses. Um, you know, we our goal with this is to have as many people finish as possible. Um, you know, and so that's why we have on a looped course with aid stations and everything like that. Um, we're, you know, we're setting this up for everyone to succeed as best as possible. That's awesome. Um, I think one of the next big questions I'm going to have, and just as a reminder to everyone who's in the chat, you know, drop those questions in the chat and I can pull them back in and we'll bring them up on the show here. But food. I like eating a lot of food when I run long distances. So what kind of food shall people expect at the aid stations and, um, you know, hot food, cold food, and what kind of, you know, nutrition may you be providing there as well? Yeah. So, um, we, I guess this is kind of a chance to plug a couple sponsors, but, um, we have Jenny Lee Swirl Bread. Uh, they're a local Pittsburgh company. They're providing, Tons of different um, different flavored breads. Um, so obviously that'll we'll have stuff like peanut butter and jelly and those basic things. Um, Pittsburgh Pickle Company is also sponsoring, so awesome. uh, they'll have different pickle juices and pickles um, at the aid stations. Um, we'll have at certain aid stations. We'll also have hot food cooking and at the finish line. Um, with just general aid station food, you know, like hot dogs, quesadillas, stuff like that. Um, and then we also have Hammer Nutrition is uh, another sponsor. So they'll be at all the aid stations as well. Um, of course, um, also the, you know, just general candies and um, like bananas, oranges, watermelon, stuff like that as well. Oh, another one, Janoski's. They're a local uh, grocery store and they'll be providing food as well. Awesome. The pickle one is pretty cool. I'm like, that's, that's pretty exciting. Everyone needs a pickle sponsor for their, their own yeah. place. I mean, I just remember, you know, sitting at Burning River and what, I think it was Cam who ran over and just shoved in one hand a thing of M&Ms and the other hand, a thing of pickle juice and said, keep walking. <laughs> so... <laughs> Sounds like we got the basis covered here. <laughs> um, yeah, that was great to hear. Um, so what, what else is about this um, particular race is, I guess, really exciting for both of you? Uh, and maybe individually, um, Moses, you want to go first? Sure. Um, so I've had conversations. So Wolf Creek times a bunch of races um, in the region. And... I've had the opportunity to talk to a number of people, you know, they come up to me and they say, Hey, you're from Wolf Creek. I'm signed up for rabbit raccoon. 
you know, this is my first time running the hundred K or my first time running the hundred mile. Um, and you know, people I see at numerous races and so I'm really excited to see how they do, uh, and cheer them on. That's definitely exciting. What about you, Brandon? Yeah, I'm, I'm just excited to, for our company to put together, you know, a first, this will be our first real ultra. And, uh, it's, it's a, it's in a type of an event that we're looking forward to putting more out in the, in the area as well. So we'll be excited to see how this goes, see how well we can deliver on, you know, the participant experience, the aid stations and, uh, participant safety and all that. But we're, we're just excited for race day to come and, to get this experience. Yeah, you've already talked about a little bit like about with the culture that you've experienced when you're timing events and you know, for you guys hosting your first big trail race, um, you know, there's gonna be a lot of uh, maybe not outside pressure, but there's definitely maybe some internal pressure from you, the feeling that you got to put on this incredible event that has, you know, a really good culture to it. And just what a, a, an event that you want to be a part of in the trail running community that is so special to you guys. So how do you um, plan to cult, culminate that or kind of create that? Um, do you have plans at the, at the aid station to do something fun at like different parties or whatnot? Like what are your thoughts on trying to like, you know, make this race as fun as possible for, for all the distances, you know, the 20 miler, the hundred K and the hundred miler. Yeah. A huge thing, you know, we have different aid station crews and you know, they we're, we're super grateful to them. Uh, we have Trail Sisters Pittsburgh coming out. They'll be at an aid station for the entire event. Um, we have Outdoor Immersion, which um, they're a group that works with veterans and having them do uh, different events in the outdoors. They'll be at an aid station. And, um, you know, I'm sure all these volunteers are going to help make it a super fun event. They're going to turn these aid stations into, um, well, all running aid stations often are very exciting places. So, um, they're definitely going to help, help out a lot. Um, as well as having all of our Wolf Creek staff there as well. Yeah. Brandon, any follow-ups? I mean, over the, over, uh, the past few years we've, we've hosted, I don't even know how many now, maybe 15, you know, half marathons and marathons. So uh, kind of what, what we build on that, we just want to uh, put a lot of that into, into our ultra races now. And I think some of the things that, you know, is normal just at a half marathon or a marathon isn't so normal, you know, at some ultras, but we just want, want to kind of bring that anyway. So, I mean, I mean, that, that's our goal to put maybe something a little bit different for all these ultra runners than they're used to seeing at an event as well. Right. Yeah. I think to build on that, um, a lot of, a lot of ultra races kind of rely on, um, just the craziness of the event itself, like the distance and, um, and don't really have as big of a show, you know, like maybe the, the finish line isn't as exciting or um, like the aid stations aren't as built up as they could be. And from, and then from our background, we can kind of bring that to the, to the um, ultra running world and kind of give people, give people a good show. And that makes it, you know, more exciting when you're coming into the finish and everything's all, you know, lit up and, you have barricades going in a huge archway and everything um, more exciting stuff like that. Yeah. And that can be, you know, sometimes really rough at some of those races when, you know, you finished and there's five people there hanging out, right. you know, you're, you're at the tail end of it or it's spread out so far that, you know, there's no one there. So that, you know, making sure that excitement at the finish line to really celebrate that, that accomplishment is, is awesome that you're paying attention to that. Um, we do have a good chat question. Uh, Maggie, uh, or AKA big saggy on Instagram says, will the rabbit raccoon be partnering with Thunder Mifflin Scranton? Uh, she wants to know about that. And will there be an Alfredo available pre-race or a pasta dinner of some sort? Uh, so no, and yes, uh, we do not currently have any partnerships with Thunder Mifflin, although 
I don't know if Michael Scott wants to extend anything. We're open to talking, but there is a pasta dinner on Friday, the night before the race. Yep. And then uh, will there be Alfredo there? Uh, there, so <laughs> there will not be Alfredo, at least not currently planned. I'm sorry. <laughs> Matt, you have to bring your own Alfredo for for this one. And, and yeah, bring your own sauce. Yeah. They can provide the noodles for you. <laughs> no, but I, uh, this has been awesome so far. I've really enjoyed, you know, kind of chit chatting with you guys about, you know, the why behind this race and kind of diving into uh, the course logistics and you know what runners will experience out there. But I kind of want to talk a little bit more about like you guys right now. Like obviously, you know, you've gained so much experience in the past couple of years through the race management company. But you know, on the outside looking in, you guys seem to just get it in the sport. You know what I mean? You know what you're looking for. You know uh, what you want an event to look like. Um, when you're going through the process, how did that come about? Was this something that you like, you know, from a young age, you always wanted to put on running events or were you, did you, were you at a running event at some point in your life that kind of changed your life and your perspective on it? And you wanted to share that with other people. Just when was it that moment that kind of just clicked for you that, you know, okay, I want to make an impact in my community. That's bigger than me. Well, I've been around track and field and endurance sports since I was eight years old. I'm 27 now. So it's, it's been a while. Um, uh, I guess me and my partner, uh, who started Wolf Creek race management, uh, we, we did that our junior year in college. Um, because we just thought, you know, you know, this, we wanted, I'm, I'm pretty entrepreneurial. I was actually entrepreneurship major at Grove City College. Um, so we knew this is like, the type of thing we would want to do. We want to kind of create things. So um, we started in 2016 and put together uh, four local 5Ks. Um, one of them was a turkey trot. So that's kind of that's kind of our starting in event planning. And then we also, um, instead of you know hiring a race timer for those events, we went and bought our own timing system that year and time for other races and then you know that's become part of it we've just been to so many races now i think since we started in 2016 we've done like 410 races or something like that we've been to timing so um i think we just did like 176 in 2021 so coming back from uh pandemic so um, we've been really busy. We've seen a lot of events. We've been at triathlons and marathons and uh, ultras and 5Ks and track meets from middle school to college. So um, we've seen events from nearly every angle. And so we kind of like, you know, I mean, that's it's a good learning opportunity seeing like what makes you know, what, what can we learn from being at a middle school cross country meet, you know, but there probably are things. So, you know, it's just being around, you know, running and endurance events at all times has really kind of uh, kept us in the zone for doing stuff like this. And I came in, um, I started, well, I guess I'm two years younger than Brandon and Andrew, the other owner of Wolf Creek. Um, but I was on the cross country and track teams with them. And so I started timing when I was in college um, and I just enjoyed it. I thought it was always fun going out to different, um, different events and just kind of being in the running community. And um, yeah, so now after college, I'm working for them um, and kind of tied into uh, rabbit rock game briefly when we, when we've been timing other trail races, you know, it is a, it's a palpable difference timing those events versus a lot of road races where there's like a, there's a different feeling in the air. You know, people are just almost happier, you know, they're more loose. They're just out there having a good time. And, um, being at those timing, those events make was part of what made us want to how get into the trail world. Um, 
to kind of just get involved with that community. Yeah, I love that community. And it's just like, it's why, you know, we do what we do and do this podcast is because it's just an amazing group of people. And, you know, all the races I've ever been at, I don't think I really ever had a bad experience, really. <laughs> like, they're just, they're just a good time. Just so. Canal Corridor last year, just watching you finish, Sean. That was the worst experience of my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Shout um, out to you for your first 100 finish last year. Got a couple questions in the chat here uh, to throw in here. Um, Rick Homan, who I think is, he's running the 100, if I believe. And according to my intern statistician, uh, this is his 31st 100. Um, wow. So he's got some little experience there. He says, uh, where did the question go? How many, about how many runners are registered for each distance so far? Can pull this up. Did, did you say how many are registered for each distance? Yeah, about how many. Uh, you don't have to look up exact okay. numbers, but. Um, so we have over 300 signed up altogether. Um, actually, a lot of those um, are in the 20 mile. So we have over 200 in the 20 mile. So that'll be, I mean, that's going to be really interesting to see. When we came up with the idea for that event, we did not really anticipate that was going to be the case. So, um, but I think, I think it'll be fun. Uh, yeah. Smaller fields in the hundred mile and hundred K. I think we got, uh, a bit over 20 and, a, and close to 40. So yeah. uh, a bit over 20 in the hundred mile and close to 40 in the hundred K. Yeah. I just looked uh, we got 25 in the hundred mile and 36 in the hundred K. So and then there's also a hundred mile relay as well. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. So like Brandon was saying, we, uh, you know, in our minds, we were thinking hundred mile, hundred K, those are like the main events. And then there was just tons of interest, I guess, in the, in the 20 mile and tons of people signed up for that. Yeah. Cause it's just more, you know, obviously easier for people to accomplish. Right. So, or we can do it, which is awesome to bring people there because maybe they'll get inspired to do, you know, their hundred miler after doing this yeah. little loop. Um, yeah. And I'm, there's also not as many people or not as many races, um, around that distance in the area, you know, there aren't many hundred miles, but there are also aren't that many just longer trail races in general, I think. So, um, got a question here from Hannah Garn. It says, where do you see Wolf Creek going from here? Question mark. Um, so our, our goal is just to keep moving forward, uh, have more events, um, you know, continue to improve the events that we have. Um, but I definitely would like to focus, you know, some, a bit more on, on the trail race events. Um, we're going to be having... Like I, I alluded to earlier, we had a half marathon at New River Gorge National Park and Preserve in June, and we're going to have that again. But this year, we're going to add a 50K as well. Which so, I guess this is like the first time that the public's officially hearing that. Breaking so. news on Ridge yeah. Runners. We love <laughs> it's that. Not, yeah, it's not, uh, registration is not open yet, but it will be uh, open this month. So, yeah, so we have that to look forward to. And, you know, we're definitely America's we have, newest national park. Yeah, awesome. still is. <laughs> um, yeah, we definitely have other ideas for, you know, some trail races as well. But, you know, we're keeping, keeping on planning for those. Uh, Andrew M in the chat says, what inspired the race name? And I really hope there is a very interesting backstory to this, but... <laughs> Um, well, it's, you know, to me anyway, it's a pretty obvious, uh, a name when you're at a place called Raccoon Creek State Park, like, um, it has to, their name has to have raccoon in it. And, you know, what other word is most associated with a raccoon other than rabid? So, and I, I, I think it's. I was just hoping that one of y'all got attacked by like a rabbit <laughs> raccoon while you were there and you know, that inspired the name. I'm, so. <laughs> no, none of us have, but I mean, I, I wouldn't rule that out as a possibility. 
I was thinking yeah. so someone won like ran like Rocky Raccoon and another person ran like Run Rabbit Run and you know that did, did that whole thing and that's how they just merged and came in with the name. No, although I was um I was listening to a podcast today to um Southeastern Trail Runners podcast and they were talking about our race because one of them is going to be running it. And I guess they announced that we're going to be giving out prize money for whoever catches a rabid raccoon during the race. We haven't really said that, but um, I don't know. If you catch a rabid raccoon, I guess bring it our way. We'll see what we can do. I mean, it's got to happen now. It's, it's, it's out there. <laughs> I could just see Rick Homan running across the finish line holding a raccoon. <laughs> That's your challenge, Rick. That's your challenge. <laughs> Another question from Ryan. I think I pronounced his last name Budnick. He says, uh, will Levy Roberts be available for autographed post race? Oh Le- yeah, Levi, Levi Roberts. Roberts. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, he's um he's someone who's done a number of our races. Um and I believe he's going to be doing the hundred mile, and it's his first attempt at the hundred mile distance. Um I don't know if he'll be, you know, aware enough after the race of you doing uh signatures um and then i got one more it says uh this one's from me but uh live tracking well you guys since you guys do race timing do you, are you gonna have live tracking uh during the race for each loop we'll, we'll have a uh a timing point at aid station one which they'll cross through each loop so yeah we'll run live results from there on our website you know, ultra running is turning into, you know, you have to know now. So like, I love, and I can't like want to watch a race and I'm like, man, I can't find out. And I look on Twitter and try to find like who's where. And like, so I'm glad that there's going to be some uh, official postings of the race during, during it. So. so looking, you know, towards the future, let's just go toward early April, you know, one week removed from this race. What does success look like for you guys in year one? So I guess you go ahead. No, um, in my mind, um, it's having, you know, having participants who finish and who are happy with their experience. Um, you know, if we have even one first time hundred miler finish the distance, I'd be really happy. Um, I think I'd be a huge success. That's awesome. Brandon. Memorable participant, uh, experiences is really, you know, our top goal for all of our events. So, and I think it could be just be amplified by, you know, the type of event this is here. So yeah, I'm really excited for it. And, you know, these are running races are the types of things that, um, you know, they, it may sound corny, but they truly can change your life. And, you know, even just having one person having an amazing life changing experience at the race be great. Yeah, no, I I fully agree with that. And you kind of, you know, touched on the location of, you know, where this race is taking place. But, you know, what makes this park, you know, like when I was kind of doing research for it, you know, I was shocked to find out how big it was and I didn't really know much about it. Um, Why is that in like, what do you think kind of attributes to that? And then why do you think, do you think runners will have a special connection to this new area? Because once they actually can know what the trails are, kind of come in and experience it in this atmosphere, do you see like just more people running in this area uh, as well? going forward after the race? Uh, I think so. I think for whatever reason, it's been a really under known and utilized park. Um, Pennsylvania has some, I don't know the exact stat, but it's like second or third in the nation in number of state parks. So we have over 200 state parks in Pennsylvania and for whatever reason it seems like raccoon creek just kind of is unknown even though it's only as a crow flies four miles from the pittsburgh international airport so it is it's really it's it's not very far it's like 30 minutes or something from 30 40 minutes from downtown pittsburgh 
Um, so it's not, it's not, it feels remote when you're there other than the planes flying right over to land. But, uh, other than that, I mean, it's not actually very remote. Like it's, it's, you know, within a half hour drive of millions of people's homes. So, um, it is, a. I think, I think after this race and even now, I think we've been drawing some more people out to the trails there. Um, and it really, I mean, I grew up, so this is East of Pittsburgh. I grew up about an hour North of Pittsburgh and up until a few years ago, I'd never even run at this park, um, and hadn't really heard much about it until we had to go down there to actually time a race. And that's when we learned about it. And we thought, you know, this is just a, I mean, the trail, the trail is pretty nice for probably how little it's used. Um, but I mean, at the time, still the perimeter trail is pretty well known by, you know, certain runners in that area. But I think, I think we'll help it get a little bit more utilized and that, that'll probably just help the, help the park and the volunteers there with, you know, keeping everything from getting overgrown as it sometimes gets in the summertime. Yeah. And I mean, a huge, a huge thing is just bringing awareness to the park from these local runners. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of the people who are signed up for the race are from the general Pittsburgh area and have never been to Raccoon Creek State Park. Hopefully they start going there more. Um, our race being there, um, you know, we're raising money for Friends of Raccoon Creek State Park, which, you know, will help make the trails better at the park and everything. Um, it's a big thing that we try and support with Wolf Creek. Uh, we try and support these um, these park groups wherever we wherever we host races. And so both by bringing new people in and then um, having a successful race, we're able to kind of contribute to the park. Yeah, no, I love when there's kind of a, a bigger purpose, you know, behind a race and, you know, you're coming into an area that's, uh, you know, is special to you guys, but then you also leave it, you know, even better kind of than you found it with, you know, new people kind of sharing those memories. So I'm excited to kind of see that. Uh, one thing I do want to ask is, why march you know personally i'm my, my injured little self right now can't get ready for a march 100 miler uh where i'm at currently but kind of what was the the purpose for the date or like you know what was the uh inspiration behind that um if honestly kind of fit into our event schedule but also the other notable uh western pa uh ultra race would be the oil Creek, which is in October. So it's kind of, kind of opposite of that in the year. Yeah. And no, if you go for it. Uh, yeah. So if you, um, can kind of will yourself to train through the winter, then late March actually can be a good time for a race. Uh, obviously you never really know with the weather, but, um, it has the potential to be a good time. It's just, kind of forcing yourself to get out the door all winter and put in those miles. Yeah, it's uh yeah, you never know what you're going to get in March. Uh, we looked back at what it was for those dates th in 2021. And it was uh, the daytime high was 58 degrees, I believe. And the overnight low was 29. So, so definitely uh, people should try to utilize their drop bags change change their outfits Don't during the race that. yeah to be fair most for races for me there's no uh you know one outfit all day all day uh for me so always uh gotta be smart out there and you know put the jacket on or uh do what you gotta do to stay warm when it uh the temperatures do drop yeah um, so you mentioned drop bags and, you know, there's, is that at every aid station Are crew allowed to go to every aid station? Um, kind of talk about a little more about the specifics behind that and, uh, you know, what, like, uh, you know, a crew member is going to experience. You kind of, you, like, I liked how you touched on the fact that, um, it's not super remote. And I know that's a lot, big thing for, you know, a lot of people who do crew races. Um, sometimes, you know, it's not fun always driving six hours around the mountain to get to another aid station. So talk about, you know, what that is like. Like for them in that experience um, on the crewing side of things? Yeah. So drop bags are allowed at aid stations 
one in four. So there's, um, I guess I never really gave an overview. There's five aid stations. Um, aid station one is the main aid station. And that's also the relay exchange zone. So aid station one will have relay exchange zone. It'll have the timer there getting um, live results up. And it's kind of like the main headquarters. Um, so you have drop bags at one and at four. Um, crew access is available for aid stations one, two, and three. No crew at aid stations four and five. Um, so there will be a group up at aid station four. You know, there will be plenty of people to take care of you going through there, but um, there's not really a good way to drive back there. So um, we're keeping crew away. And then aid station five is going to be a smaller aid station. Um, and again, not really great parking. And then um, also road crossing. So we just don't want to have a ton of people in that area as well. But um, yeah, one, two, three for crew. And it's because it's a looped course, it's super easy to get around to places. Um, there's actually a main road that kind of goes right through the middle of the course, which then helps, um, helps crew as well to get to where they need to go. Awesome. Is that a boat? Or no, is... no. So yeah, it's kind of confusing. <laughs> That's so, <on> me. <laughs> yeah. So the loop kind of, you can think of it almost like a, it's like a figure eight and the lake is in one of the circles. And then um, the figure eight doesn't fully touch in the middle, but it gets like pretty close. And that's where the road goes through. That would be pretty epic if the crew members had to just take a boat to the yeah. end. I, think, I think maybe uh, something to look forward to uh, in the future. Do you have any uh, follow-ups on that, Brandon? Uh, not really. Um, I think he said it pretty well. Awesome. John, I think there's a chat question here. I got two more chat questions that came in. Uh, another one from Rick Coleman says, what's the buckle look like? Ooh, poor oh. question. Oh, that's a, yeah. yeah. That's a tough one. So let me pull up. Um, I guess we have not displayed it publicly. Um, but we have, we do have a design. I guess I can kind of describe it without showing. Yeah. Um, it does have a ra uh, an image of a raccoon in the center, which you should expect. Um, it has the elevation gain on it. Um, and then of course it has rabbit raccoon 100 mile. Um, but yeah, it'll be a nice sizable, sizable metal buckle. Follow up to that, is there a sub 24 buckle? There is not. Uh, um, if you, yeah, so if you do run sub 24, I would expect that uh, you're going to probably do pretty well. And the first place overall male and female finishers have a uh, very large championship wrestling belt. So, yeah. Let's go. We need more of that in uh, trail and ultra running. I can get behind I think that. I is going to be signing up for this race now. Yeah, it's like, it's like I'm, I'm officially in this race. I said I was not in, but, uh, you know, listen, watching too much uh, Pat McAfee on uh, SmackDown and, you know, that whole thing. So, um, yeah, we're all in the wrestling world now. Um, another question from Andrew M. in the chat again. It says, what kind of wildlife can I expect to see out there besides raccoons? We're obviously racing you around, chasing you and stuff like that. So, And then... Uh we got a lot of white-tailed deer in the area. Pennsylvania is famous for them. Um, if you're lucky, you might see a black bear. Uh, we haven't seen one at the park, but we've seen them at some of our, some of our other races we've held uh, in the area. Um, you know, possibly foxes or hopefully not skunks, but possibly. Uh, just the, nor the normal eastern woodlands animals. Well, hey, to you, it's normal. To someone else, it could be yeah. exotic, yeah. you know? Could, Bald yeah. eagles could be going sweeping over the lake. There could be, uh, you know, 
you can see porcupines or who knows groundhogs lots of maybe? stuff out there do you just say yeah, groundhogs, groundhogs day like, yeah definitely, wow. definitely groundhogs yeah squirrels maybe someone's never seen a squirrel ryan budnick said mountain lions maybe i mean i i know pa is known for their mountain lions <laughs> Uh, the, the, the Pennsylvania Game Commission says they don't exist, so probably not. But hey, you know, one could one could just kind of wander down, <laughs> make its way through. Just on a vacation, just happens to stop through on a race day. Uh, no, this is awesome. Uh, let's, uh, you know, original nation. If you have any final questions for these two, uh, drop them in the chat. Now we're going to kind of transition over to our, uh, quick questions now where we kind of rapid fire and go through some fun ones and we will make it kind of race specific. So I'm excited to kind of dive into that, but we touched on food earlier, but you know, what's one thing that you think your runners are not going to be able to leave an aid station without. I mean, this this may sound boring, but you know the the basic water and sports drinks. We got the we got Hammer Nutrition hooking us up with their with their uh, stuff. Um, but you know, pickle juice might be interesting. Uh, I was gonna say pickle juice. That's yeah, gonna be a crowd. Answer. Yeah. <laughs> that that's gonna be a crowd favorite for sure. Um, you know what is we got a race specific here. So, uh, you know, the weirdest mid race hallucination or strangest thing that you think you'll see somebody eat at your race here. Um, you know, um, do you think people are going to actually start seeing rabid raccoons out, out on the race, uh, potentially? Definitely. We're putting it in their heads. I mean, <laughs> they're, they're going to just be thinking rabid raccoon, rabid raccoon, rabid raccoon. And it's going to be nighttime. They're going to be tired. And then what's going to be staring out of the woods Rabbit raccoon, definitely. Love it. So we have a question here that we normally do. You know, if ultra running had walk up songs like baseball, what would yours be? But we're gonna try to transition this over to race specific again. You know, what's kind of one song that you guys would pick that kind of culminates the spirit of this race? And this song will be added to our Tunes of the Nation Ridge Runners Spotify playlist. Ah, uh, the tough one. Edge. That's an interesting question. Maybe like Born to be Wild or something like that. Like, yeah, that's a good that's a good one. Love it. And then um, do you have any final, you know, sponsors, social media, anyone else you want to say thank you to before we wrap up? Um Yeah, I mean, I think we kind of mentioned them, but um, you know, Hammer Nutrition, Pittsburgh Pickle Company, um, Southeastern Trail Runner podcast, uh, Janowski's, Genuinely Squirrel Bread. Um, they've all been huge helps. And then um, Trail Sisters Pittsburgh and Outdoor Immersion. Oh, also, I don't want to forget this. Um, Trail Runner Nation can receive 10% off. We've got a coupon code in there for you. Um, so what was it that we picked out? Uh, Ridge. 10 yeah i believe ridge 10 yeah 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 that's awesome so that's gonna be great so whoever hasn't signed up yet uh you heard it go get go get signed up for that um we also got another chat question here so obviously it's probably the most important question of the night um Easily. coming from ryan ryan budnick again says who's the better runner between the two of you <laughs> I'd say Moses probably has me at this point. Yeah, Brandon was better than me in college, but I've gotten I've gotten better and I think he's gotten a little worse. <laughs> so I'm glad you both agree upon this. <laughs> um and we got one more from Don Lyle it says, What is the most memorable moment for each of you uh on your running careers so far? I don't know. It's hard to say. Moses, do you have a good one? Um, so it's hard to pin it down to one, but maybe I guess there's two things. One, I 
lost a mileage competition against Brandon and some other people year long mileage competition. And I had to, um, run a marathon as punishment. And that was at the time that was actually no, to this point, it's the longest that I've ever run. So, um, that was a big one. And then also finishing just the first loop of the red raccoon course, um, just because of how Andrew and Brandon hyped that up kind of was a big thing in my mind. I, I'd probably say something more like uh, track and field related, like uh, my sophomore year, we like, we won uh, the conference championship track meet at home. Uh, but I mean, I, it's just, it's hard to pick when I've been around the sport so much. Um, and I'm kind of, I'm really kind of more in race director mode these days than in, uh, in, in runner mode, though I still do run every day and I like to get in an occasional race when I can, but, but, you know, I, I'm really kind of in the focus of, you know, bringing good events to, to people who want to run. He's being modest. Brandon actually recently, just last year, he came in second place at the Glacier Ridge Trail Ultras um you know just in third hopped K. in oh third place third k in the 30k i was second place oh right but. right um yeah hmm. that was a fun Being race modest. Being modest. that was a fun race appreciate you both sharing those and you know i hope that y'all create these same kind of moments for the runners at your race coming up here soon um i think that sounds like both of your goals uh so it's great um other than that, I think this is all we got for the evening, right, Wesley? Yeah, no, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight to kind of talk about the, the inaugural race. We're super uh, pumped up to hear about the stories that come out of it um, and all things uh, kind of coming that are going to take place in uh, just over a month's time now. So uh, thank you both for joining us tonight, and uh, we're excited to hear about how the race goes afterwards. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you.